And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for the Bible. We thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for the opportunity to share the Word of God today. And Lord, we ask that in Jesus' name, that Lord, this, this, this message would truly speak to our hearts today. Lord, whether we've been serving God a long time or we're new to God or we've never even met God personally, Today will be the day that we do that, but Lord, we will hear the, the word of the Lord today, and would receive it, and we would actively apply it to our life. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, amen. amen. So, if you want to be free, if you want to be free, we thank God because we live in a free nation, but if you want to be free, you have to choose the right master. Yeah, and we're all saying, I want that dog. <laughs> Some of you were literally watching it like this. Your mouth was wide open. I won't say who you are, but I, I, I know what the back of your teeth look like today. No, I'm joking. So my question today is a very serious one, and it's one that a lot of times people don't really think about. But my question is, who or what is your master? Some of you say, well, no one's my master. Everyone has a master. Everyone has a master. What controls you? Maybe a better way of asking is, is who or what have you allowed to have control in your life? We all allow something or someone. If I followed you around for a week, I could tell you what or who is your master. Who controls or what controls your life? The Bible gives us a very important scripture early, early in the beginning of mankind. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 7 God himself is talking to Cain, and, and he says to him, Sin is crouching at your door. Sin is crouching at your door. He tells Cain, it desires to have you, but you must master it. Now, that's quite a word picture, isn't it? Imagine sin crouching at the door of your heart, ready to pounce on you and take control. But you have to master it. You have to make sure that it does not control you. Who or what is your master? We really need to think about that. What controls your life? Here's an important principle that I really want to unpack with you today, and I want you to listen to this. You choose your master. You choose what controls you. Now, it's an upside-down statement, but if you want to truly be free, choose the right master. Choose the right master. Proverbs chapter 29, verses 18 says, Where there is no revelation or vision or boundary, it all means the same thing, people cast off restraints. But blessed, everybody say blessed. Blessed is the one 
who heeds wisdom's instructions. Another way of saying it is blessed is the one who receives revelation or vision or boundaries that give them direction in life. Blessed is the one who receives that. The Bible says that you are blessed when you have direction in your life. When you have a revelation that leads you to a certain point in life. Boundaries that control you. Now that's an upside down statement in our society, isn't it? But Jesus says, blessed is the man who has boundaries that control them. Now sadly, most people think freedom comes when you just choose to live your life all willy-nilly and do whatever comes natural and whatever is fun or most exciting in the moment. But actually, that way of living causes more heartache and pain, not only for you, but for those around you. Amen? Now, Paul wrote about this issue of control in Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse 15. Romans 6, 15, he said, Shall we sin because we are not under the law but but under grace? See, a, a current popular teaching is that because you're under grace, you have the freedom to do whatever you want, that God's grace will cover all of your wrong choices. It's popular because people like want permission to chase their desires without any consequences. They want to do whatever their flesh wants to do without any consequences. And it may be popular, but it's not biblical. In ancient Rome, the Jewish legalists taught that obedience to the law, but not just God's law, a whole bunch of other laws that they made up, was the only way to salvation. And then Paul comes along and, and he says, really, the law doesn't save you. The law just tells you that you need to be saved. It shows you what needs to happen. Instead, we are saved by grace, and it is a free gift of God made possible because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Now, then the legalists come along, and they they take that pendulum, and they swing it way to the other side, and, and they say, well, Paul has given us permission to ignore the Word of God and just do whatever we want to do. And then in Romans, again, Paul says, Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? And his answer is, no way. By by no means is that what I am saying. You see, church, we need to understand something. Grace is not a permission to sin. Being saved by grace is not an excuse to do whatever you want, whenever you want. That's actually, that's not freedom. In fact, Paul says this, Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. You see, we want to throw in a third category. Well, I'm not doing either one. I'm just being me. There's no third category. It's either you're a slave to sin or you're a slave to righteousness. Which is it? One leads to death. One leads to righteousness and life in Jesus. The message version says it this way. Since we are out from under the old tyranny, does that mean we can live any old way we want? Since we're free... Since we're free in the freedom of God, can we do anything that comes to mind? Hardly. You know well enough from your own experience that there are some acts of so-called freedom that destroy freedom. Offer yourselves to sin, for instance, and it's your last free act. When someone does wrong, the classic excuse is, well, The devil made me do it. Well, I certainly agree the devil wants you to sin and he tempts you to sin, but the devil doesn't make you do anything. You choose. You choose who to follow 
You choose what controls you or who controls you. You choose whether the flesh controls you or whether the spirit controls you. It is a choice. Now here's the important thing to remember. What you intentionally choose eventually, listen, becomes your master. That is what everyone who says, well, I have my rights, misses. You do. You have the right to choose. But that free choice can quickly lead to the exact opposite of freedom. You have to determine your destination. I want you to listen to me. You have to determine your long-term destination where you ultimately want to be what you want to be before you start making your choices. Why? Because your choice determines your direction, and your direction determines your destination. I want to read that again. Your choice determines your direction in life, and your direction will determine your destination. So some free choices lead to being captive and actually trapped. What once was optional is now in complete control of your life. You are caught. You are stuck. It, it can't seem to escape from it. It's a habit you can't get over. You become a slave to what was once a free choice. I know someone who was a drug dealer who used his own product. He started dealing for money, but quickly found a new master, cocaine. Even after being clean for 12 years, he said, I still crave cocaine every day. Every day, cocaine was his cruel master. You see, a free choice became a master to him. I know another person who has been an alcoholic for over 13 years. It started with her desire to be more fun and fit in at the parties. But soon her life was driven by the relentless pursuit of, I just got to have that next drink. She, was, she, was, she spent huge amounts of money on rehab and, and had lost countless jobs and had left a, left a trail of dead-end relationships and what started as a way to just relax and fit in and have more fun became her master I have another friend controlled by the need of attention and approval he wants to be the center of attention and he expects everyone to treat him as a as a big star he's got talent but it's talent that's out of control at the moment, he's making a series of decisions that is horribly affecting his life in the wrong way. But attention is his master, and he'll do whatever it takes to get it. I have another friend who had a life-controlling uh, sex problem. He was a sex addict. Now, sex inside the marriage is healthy, and it's God-designed. But his drive for sexual satisfaction destroyed him and his marriage and his family. And because sex became his master. Now I know what a lot of you guys are thinking right now. Pastor John, you need to get some new friends. <laughs> Stay tuned. Those aren't my only friends. I know others who chose a different master. And still others who escaped the control of, a, of the master of sin. I shared four choices that can become your master. Sex, alcohol, cocaine, and the approval of others. But let's take a few moments and, and let's maybe expand that list a little bit. What about lying? Oh, it's just a little lie to, you know, to, to make something work out in business or it's just a little lie to, so I don't get in trouble with my parents or I don't get in trouble with my wife or whatever. And, and before you know it, you're lying about everything. You don't even know it. How about this one? This is one people don't think about, but insecurity. See, the devil, he'll attack you with insecurity, and, and you become comfortable being insecure, and that insecurity keeps you from doing the things that God has called you to do. And before you know it, it's not you use it as an excuse all the time, and you're doing nothing for God. How about stealing? 
You know, you just take a little bit here and a little bit there. Nobody's going to know it. Nobody's going to miss it. You just cheat a little bit on your taxes. You just cheat a little bit at work. You just do a little bit here and there. And before you know it, it, it becomes your, your master. And here's one that I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say is, how about isolation? In the midst of difficult times, we'll isolate ourselves. Instead of running to God and God's people, we kind of pull away. And then all of a sudden, we become comfortable in that isolation. And we become a slave to that isolation. We can't move forward. How about anger? How about pornography? Or how about gambling? Oh, we're just doing it for a little bit of fun. You know, we know exactly what we're going to spend. And before you know it, it becomes your master, right? Now, some of you are thinking, come on, Pastor John, I'm too smart to choose those things. They're, they're obvious. I would never choose to be a slave to any of those things because they would destroy me. But what about some more harmless stuff? Some stuff that we normally consider good, but we let it get out of control and it becomes our master. It's the most important thing in our life. It is, if we look, it's what controls us. What about money? What about working out? What about work? What about our job? What about our career? It can definitely become our master. Or what about food? We just keep putting all this unhealthy stuff in the temple of God, and we don't even think anything about it. What about shopping? Or what about golf? What about video games? What about video games? What about video games? What about social media? What about gaining knowledge? Knowledge can become your God, and you love knowledge more than you love God. What about sports? What about entertainment? What about family or friends or even your personality or popularity? or a ministry position, or even something that you're passionate about, you can become more in love with what you're passionate about, the cause, than you are God. We see it all the time. You look at this list, and there are a lot of free choices that lead to anything but freedom, right? We all know people who would give up almost anything to be free from their freedom. Right? When we started talking about habits, we, we want to make two lists. We want to make that bad list, right? And then we want to make the, the good list. But, but at the end of the day, if you're a slave, you're a slave. If it's your master, it's your master. Whether it's pornography or your job. When we stand before God, God's going to say, what do you love most, me and my kingdom and building the kingdom, or your job, or pornography, or money, or your career, or family? What, what comes first? Anything that comes before God is your master. Whatever you serve, what dominates your time and attention, what you must have and can't do without, whatever you serve is your I read something this week and said religion is being in church and thinking about fishing or something else. But a relationship with Jesus is fishing or doing something else but thinking about Jesus. You see, Paul continues and he said, But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free. Everybody say set free. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Amen. The message version says it this way. But offer yourselves to the ways of God and the freedom never quits. <laughs> All your lives, you've let sin tell you what to do. But thank God you started listening to a new master. One who, one who command, whose command set you free to live openly in his freedom. Amen. When you, escape, when you accept Jesus into your heart, you are choosing a new master. 
right? Instead of being a slave to sin, you live in true freedom. Now, maybe you've heard people make this statement before. Well, I can't be a Christian because there's just too many rules, right? Or it, it, it takes away my freedom. It's, it's really too restrictive. You see, that's, that's a lack of understanding the things of God in the ways of God. It's not really restrictive at all. So Jaden has this dog named Ellie. And Ellie is, is, is a really chill dog, all right? That's the only reason I let her stay around, okay? She's just easy to get along with. She chills every once in a while. About 9 o'clock at night, she gets what I call the zoomies, and she runs up and down the hall, and then she stops, and she's good. She puts about five minutes worth of energy into her whole day, okay? She, she's just chill, okay? And, and, but, but Ellie has a problem. If you let Ellie outside, she's going to go explore the world and get lost and starve to death and never come back, okay? She, she just, she, you know, I got a big backyard, a huge yard, can't really afford to fence it, don't really want to afford to fence it. But we wanted to have Ellie to have more freedom. So we got her a collar to help train her. Now, I know some of you are going to want to send me emails and say, how would you like to wear a collar? Or uh, there's a better way to train a dog. Well, you're more than welcome to come and train her. You're more than welcome. But um, so now that she has this collar, before she had the collar, she couldn't go outside unless we went out with her. Her freedom was restricted to our availability. And then when we did go outside, she had to be with us all the time in eyesight or she would be gone, right? And so she had very little freedom without this collar. But then when we put this collar on her, uh, she quickly realized the boundaries. And for her first couple of days, she wouldn't even go outside. But after a while, she began to realize that she had all this massive ro room to roam. And she could go out when she wanted to, as long as she wanted to. We didn't have to be with her. She could go out anytime she wanted to. She could stay outside when we're not home. She can stay outside all night if she wants to. She has all of this freedom now to do whatever she wants, when she wants. And she knows she's going to have food and water and protection from the heat and the, and the cool. And what she thought eventually was a restriction in her life actually gave her much more freedom freedom than she ever had and a stable, better life. When I married Kara in 1993, I chose to commit to her. No one forced me to do it. It was a free decision to marry her. Uh, you know, because I married Kara, I'm not looking for another wife. Because I committed myself to Kara, I don't go on dates with other women. I won't sleep with anyone else. I will honor Kara. I will buy her gifts on special days. I will love her. I will occasionally pretend to like to go flea market shopping. <laughs> I will sometimes miss things that are important to me because I prioritize what she wants over what I want. I won't get home late without calling her and letting her know I won't make big financial decisions without being her being on board. So being married to, to Kara really sounds res restrictive, doesn't it? No, not at all. Once I decided I loved her and committed my life to her, those choices became easy. They were natural. It's what I wanted to do. Those aren't boundaries, all right? Those aren't bondages. They are freedom. Listen to me. I want to teach you something. When you get saved, you're not adopting a bunch of rules. You're entering into a love relationship with the God of heaven. Amen? Amen. A love relationship. You know what else I got because I chose Kara? I don't have the pressure of dating anymore. I always have someone to come home to. I have a partner in life's journey and in ministry. She loves me and she takes care of me. She helps remember important things that I forget. Now, we both need help with that, but she takes care of things that, that I can't take care of. We have three wonderful children. 
and a daughter who has a wonderful husband who gave me the best thing that in life, my grandson, amen? The blessing comes with the decision. I want you to get that, right? When you decide to follow Jesus, you aren't signing up to follow a long list of rules. Instead, you are choosing to love and have a loving experience of freedom in Christ. The things you no longer do, you don't do because of rules. You don't do them because you love Jesus. And you know he knows what's best for you. You choose life under his control. You choose to no longer be a slave to sin, but instead be controlled by righteousness. Amen? A commitment to Jesus because you love him. Amen? When you love him, you choose not to gossip and complain. You choose not to be controlled by uh, substance abuse or, or sin. You choose to follow his commands. You choose to honor him with your finances. You choose to obey and honor him with your relationships and your sexuality. You choose to honor him with your marriage. You choose to guard your heart and allow, not allow things in it that would hinder your relationship with Jesus. Amen? Once you decided to, to love him and commit yourself to Jesus, those choices became easy. They aren't bondage. They are freedom. Amen? You know what else you get when you choose to follow Jesus? Hang on. You are unconditionally loved. You have an eternal home waiting for you in heaven. Amen? You have peace in the middle of life's biggest storms. You have a church family who loves you and cares about you. You no longer have to rely on substance to keep you happy. Amen? Because your identity is in Him, you don't have to worry about pleasing people or competing to be the best. You find value in meaning and in life as you come alongside him to reach the world that he loves. You don't have to fret and worry about your future because you recognize God has a plan for your life. Isn't that good? You have strength when you're feeling weak. You have guidance through the most difficult times of life. And you have a friend when you feel lonely that will never leave you and never forsake you. You have joy when bad things happen. You have courage in the face of the unknown. So when I lay it out that way, it's an easy choice, isn't it? Your decision to follow determines your choice. And you get all the blessings and freedoms that come with a relationship with Jesus. Amen? You are no longer controlled by sin or your flesh or your lostness. You are no longer controlled by that. You have chosen to be a slave to righteousness. To give Jesus control of your life. Do you understand what salvation is? It's just giving Jesus control. We call him Lord. Lord and Savior. Lord is important. Which means one having power and authority over others. Amen. He is your master by choice. Amen. Here's the greatest news if you're here today. If you made the wrong choice, you can make a new choice. Aren't you glad? In the same way you choose sin, you can choose a new master Jesus Christ. I have a friend who was once a horrible alcoholic. Drinking cost him thousands of dollars and almost destroyed his marriage. But one day, he found Jesus. He found a new master. He is now on our worship team and he is the worship leader at CR. and He is moving toward being in ministry and you guys know him as J.B. I have another friend who grew up in a Christian home, but then chose another path in life. His choice led to heartache and pain and confusion and emptiness. And then one day, he finally knelt down at a church and committed his life to Jesus. 
God has blessed him with a wonderful wife and three wonderful children and an awesome career where he's making a difference for Jesus every single day. You guys know him as Ben Duff. I have a friend who was raised in a Christian home but ended up incarcerated. While in prison, he realized his need for a Savior. And God's still working on him and he's moving forward and making some good decisions in his life. And you guys know him as Miko. I have another friend who was a pastor and was falsely accused of something which took him down a very dark place in his life. And unfortunately, he turned to alcohol. But God graciously forgave him and restored him and has put him in a very important ministry position at Union Rescue Mission in the Dorcas House. You guys know him as Derek Jones. I have another friend who was raised in a Christian home and felt the call of God on his life but chose to run from that call and go into the business world. He was a very successful businessman who was in charge of a warehouse for Safeway until he finally accepted the call of God on his life to be a pastor. God used him to start many churches and change many lives. You guys know him as Pastor King. When you choose Jesus as your master, he changes your story. When you choose Jesus as your master, he changes your story. It's not always a choice that controls. I have another friend who was trapped in a controlling toxic situation. What initially seemed like a good thing became her prison. Then with the help of caring people and the strength of God, she found freedom. Today, she is the worship leader at our North Little Rock campus. and Her name is Mary Grace. Jesus brings freedom. I said, Jesus brings freedom. Amen. Let me talk to you a minute to those of you who have been lifelong followers of Jesus. You always have served Jesus. You never chose to, to walk away from Jesus. Your story is, he's always been my master. Sometimes, unfortunately, <laughs> because we don't have a a great testimony of deliverance. We feel like a second class citizen sometimes. But can I tell you, your story is the greatest story of all. Your story is the story everybody else wishes they have. I'm very thankful for the restorative path back to Jesus. But can I tell you, the preventive path is always the best path. I think of people like Ashley Duff. And Kristen Wimberly Farron. And Caleb Farron. And Zach Heath Scott, and Callie Heath Scott, and Jeremy Briggs, and Steve Austin, and Gina Lowe, and Greg Caswell, Diana Caswell, Kent Charles, Brittany Charles, and many, many more. Romans 6.16 6, says, Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. So I want to end the message with the same question I started with. Who or what is your master? Who or what controls your life? 